Hello there, this is Kush Sharma from Creative Pad Media. In this tutorial, we'll be seeing how to turn this image into a professional headshot that looks really real and nice. So let's get started. We're gonna be using a tool called Design AI. This definitely is amongst the free AI headshot generators, the best tool out there. When you go to this website, the link will be given in the description as well as the image that we are working on will be given in the description. When you go to this website and you create your account, you will get for the first time 50 credits for free. And then every 24 hours, you get 32 credits. So you can use this tool a lot for free. So right now you can see that my credits are showing up as eight. So anytime we use this tool for the headshot generating feature, you will consume four credits. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, where do you find this tool? So once you've created your account and it'll show you this interface, there are two ways to access this tool, okay? One is, if you are lucky, sometimes you might find this tool called AI Profile Picture. And I say lucky because this is actually their image to image generator, but if you click on it, it's just that they load some of the presets and they write the prompt for you like everything is done for you, like the style is chosen, the prompt is there. You simply delete this image, upload your own image, and then as I'm gonna be showing you, do some changes here and hit generate. So basically, two or three tasks are saved, okay? But what happens often is that you may not actually see or find this AI profile picture tool. So where is the base of this tool, which is the image to image generator. Well, that's always gonna be there because either you're gonna find this thing that says popular tools, or you'll find something which says AI tools, and it's gonna be right here in the start, which is image to image. So once this opens up, you're gonna realize that it's basically the same thing. It's just that this time we don't have the prompt here, we'll have to write it on our own, and we don't have that style given to us. That's the only difference, because last time when I uploaded a YouTube video about it, a lot of people got confused because they could not find the AI profile picture option. That's nothing but the image to image generator in design. So now that that's clear, let's get started. We, are, we can just click on this sample image that they give, we can hit delete, and let's upload our own headshot here. All right, so our headshot is ready, now remember, we have to do this on our own. So what you can do here is under style, we can go over to the category where it says portrait. And the best style that works for corporate headshots or business headshots is the modern professional style. However, I've also experimented with things like not having a style at all here. So there's an option called no style. And to be frank, it didn't really make that much of a difference because the main thing is gonna come from the prompt itself, okay? So let's write the prompt, which is going to be something like professional portrait of a man looking into the camera and smiling. He is wearing a black business suit. Of course, you can change this according to your own requirements against a gray background and we can say suit with tie, okay? So something like this, you can just type and then you have the next option which says style intensity. This means that the future generation that is gonna reflect here, how close should it be to the colors and the lighting and everything that you're seeing here? Basically the design elements, the creative elements that you're seeing here. So what I've just seen is this slider, just leave it at the default, okay? Don't really mess around too much with this because the next slider is very important, which says structure match, which basically refers to the different outlines of the texture that you're seeing here, including the outline of his face, the body, the clothes, even the texture on this dress that he's wearing. How closely should that be followed, okay? Now this is where design is very different from the other AI headshot generating tools because sometimes in the other free tools especially, when you do hit generate, it just gives you the generated AI image which has a completely different pose and a body structure or face structure to the original and that obviously reduces the realism in the shot. But in design, you can actually give or take away the liberty from this tool to do that. So if you take this higher, we're being more conservative, more strict. We're saying that maintain the structure of everything as close as possible to the shot. What I've seen is the best results usually come from being at the suggested range, but 
being towards the end of it. Like, so this is 0.7. So very, very similar. However, we'll be doing this twice. And I'll also be showing you what is one issue with this. That means when we are slightly strict, yes, it maintains the outline very well, but then it can incorporate some elements which we don't want. So we'll see that when these generations uh, come here. Do we want to match the color? of the shot, no, because we are going for a studio portrait. So it is bound to have different colors than an outdoor portrait. So we're gonna turn this off. And usually this is turned off, okay? You can turn face match on. It's gonna to try to keep it as close to the face as possible. That is something we want. However, it's still, design still struggles with the face as you're gonna see, but that's not a problem because we will be doing a face swap later on. And higher quality, yes. And now we can finally hit generate and let's wait for the four results that it will produce for us. All right, so you can see that our images have started to come here. And something that I was, I was uh, talking about when it comes to the structure is something that is soon gonna become very evident once these pictures come up. So let's just wait for one more image to come here. All right, so we got all our four images and now you actually start to understand what this structure option here is. Because if you look at the first image, you can see that we wrote in the prompt that he should be wearing a black business suit, but this time you can see that it's trying to put that design that he had in his original dress onto the suit here, right? So that's because this is very, very strict. So think of this as being in competition with the prompt. If it's too strict, it just doesn't follow the prompt too much. It's going to follow the original image more, okay? Now, but the good part here is that you can see in all these generations, his outline and the structure is very similar, which makes it look very, very real. See, but in these three generations, we've got this problem of the dress, but at least we've got one generation here in which we've got the correct suit here, right? So we can hit download, but, and then it's just gonna show you this option. You have no other options on the free plan, but to go for JPEG and the same size here, but that's not a problem. We can just uh, hit download and now, I just want to show you what happens if we like, let's say, put this to slightly at a liberal range, which is 0.5, then it's going to follow the prompt more. So we won't see this issue of the dress being there, but then the downside will be that he might become leaner or his uh, face structure might change and stuff like that. Okay, so let's just hit generate and let's also see this. All right, so I actually ran out of credit, so it didn't allow me to get the next four generations, but I had done this before and I had saved these images. So with these settings, the new settings, these were the four results in front of us, as you can see. And this time you can see that we had more images which had the suit and the tie and we weren't facing that problem. But this time you can also see in these images that his face changed a bit, like the structure and it just didn't look similar to the original image. So that's the trade-off. You have to find that perfect balance basically. The best thing that you can hope for is what we got the first time around, which is that you use a higher structure, but then you do get lucky with one of the generations where it also follows the things that you had written in the prompt, because then you get the best of both the worlds, the creative thing, things that you wanted, and as well as the structure that you wanted. So since we already found the winner in our uh, first generation, which was the second image, we're going to proceed to the next step with that. Right, so this is the image that we have got. And right now, if you compare it to the original, everything looks good, but the only issue is that his face doesn't look good. That's where, that's where design struggles a bit. So let's go to a free AI tool that can help us do a quick face swap, and then it's gonna improve massively. So one of the best face swapping AI tools out there is by Remaker called the Face Swap. It's a free tool. You don't even have to register for it. You do get certain amount of credits. Let's upload both the images here, and let's do the face swap. All right, both the images are ready. Let's hit swap and let's see the results here. All right, we've got our new image. Let's quickly see this and the original generated image side by side. All right, so you can see that that is a massive improvement. This is what we got from design. And this is after the remake of face swap. Now also let's see how this is looking to the original image. All right, so now you can see the advantage of having that structure slider towards the higher side because you can see this looks really real. Even if I use the slider feature here, you can see that this is before and after. This is looking good. Now, the only thing is we need to just improve the quality of this image because sometimes when you use these free AI tools and especially couple them together, use them one after the other, it can produce some artifacts. So you can see 
here on the boundaries, we've got some issues here. So we are gonna be using a free tool to quickly correct this. Now, what I'm about to show you can be done using Photoshop Generative Fill also, but since a lot of people don't have that, what you can do is you can go to firefly.adobe.com. The link will be given in the description. When you create your Adobe account, you get 25 generations for free. So you will be able to use it. And what you're gonna do here is you're gonna go down to this Generative Fill feature. Let's upload the image that we had got after the face swap. All right, so you can see the image being reflected here. Now, make sure you are on the Insert tool, which is basically the Generative Fill tool here. And we can just paint those areas and then run this on an empty prompt to let Firefly do the job. So first of all, what we will do is, we will just use the shortcut, which is Control Command and plus and minus to zoom in and out. So we're gonna zoom in at least to this much. Then we're gonna take a really small brush here. Okay, so we can decrease the brush size from here. We just want it to be so small that we just stay on the edges. So this much should be fine. And just close this. Just paint over these areas, wherever you are seeing those artifacts. Whenever you need to move around, you can hold down the space bar, you get this palm icon. And do a bit of it here. Anytime you feel you do just gone somewhere too much, you can always subtract from this. Just a bit here, and probably this. And something like that should hopefully fix. So just hit generate and let's wait for the, the results here. This is the first variation that we've got. So you can see now that, that has smoothened things out. This is the second one and third one. So oftentimes it can lead to like some issues like this. But that's not a problem, at least the other areas are looking fine. So we can hit keep and then just do this once again on the areas that are I just need to be corrected again. And let's hit generate. All right, so that has fixed that up. We're gonna hit keep and we're gonna hit download. So we've got our image ready. Now the only thing is, again, because we've been using some free AI tools, the quality definitely goes down. So we are gonna quickly use a free AI tool to increase the image quality. So we can go to photorestore.io slash restore. The link will be given in the description. The moment you go to this website, it's very easy to use. Under this, just select increase image quality. Let's upload our image and it'll start the process. All right, so you can see that it has started working on our image. And you can see that just took less than five seconds and now we've got a really sharp looking image. We can hit download. And now if we look at these images side by side, I think this looks absolutely fantastic. So in case this video helped you out, do give it a like. And if you want to follow along all my experiments with the different AI tools that can help you edit your photos in a faster and easier way, make sure you subscribe and I will see you next time.